Hello and welcome to the ninth video of module two. In this video, we're going to discuss two kinds of graphs, pie charts, and time series. The focus of this video is on interpreting information from these kinds of charts and not so much on how to create these kinds of charts. Let's get started. A pie graph is a circular graph divided into wedges, where each wedge represents a portion of the whole. Most often, the wedges of a pie graph will be labeled with percentages. Let's look at an example. The pie graph below illustrates the race and ethnicity demographics at MVCC. This information is based on the 2015 IPEDS report. Part A, what is the race or ethnicity of the majority of students at MVCC? To answer this question, we need to look at the pie graph and find the biggest piece of the pie. It's pretty evident that this is the largest piece of the pie, representing 76% of the students at MVCC. Based on the key, this wedge of the pie was red, and the red piece represents white students. So white is the race or ethnicity of the majority of students at MVCC. Part B, what percent of students fall into the Asian, Black or African American, or Hispanic Latino categories? This question deals with three different categories. The first one are the Asian students. Since Asian is represented by the green piece, we're first gonna start by looking at the percentage for the green piece of the pie. In this case, that's 4%. The Black or African American is represented by the yellow piece of the pie, and the yellow piece of the pie is 7%. And lastly, the Hispanic Latino category is represented by the orange piece of the pie graph, and that is also 7%. So we'll add another 7%. This means that total, 18% of the students fall into the Asian, Black, or African American, or Hispanic Latino categories. Let's do one more example. Approximately 7,150 students were enrolled at MVCC at the time of the study. How many of these students were of two or more races or ethnicities? In this case, we're interested in students who are of two or more races or ethnicities. This is the indigo portion of the graph. When I look at the pie chart, this is just 2% of the population. However, this question is a little bit different from the previous questions in that it's not asking us about a percentage. Instead, it specifically asks us how many of these students. That means we're going to have to use the percentage and the total number of students to figure out how many students were of two or more races or ethnicities. To do that, first we're gonna turn that 2% into a decimal, and I'm gonna write that as 0.02. You could find this either by dividing by 100 or by moving the decimal point two places to the left. Then we'll multiply that by the population size. In this case, there were 7,150 students enrolled at MVCC. So to find 2% of this population, I multiply 0.02 times 7,150, and that'll give me 143 people. And that's it for a pie graph. The second type of graph we'll discuss in this video is called a time series. A time series is a line graph that charts values obtained over equal intervals of time. Let's look at an example. The time series below illustrates the average monthly temperature in Rome, New York every month from 2014 to 2015. Generally speaking, in a time series, the horizontal axis will be broken down into equal intervals of time. In this case, the horizontal axis is broken down into months over the span of two years, starting at January of 2014 and ending at December of 2015. Let's use this graph to answer some questions. First, describe the overall pattern in the average temperatures over these two years. Now, there are a couple of ways that you could describe this pattern. For example, a common response is to say that these values are bimodal. However, you have to be careful about that because this distribution isn't quite bimodal, mostly because the vertical axis is not a frequency, so we're not looking at frequently occurring values. Instead, we're looking at temperatures at particular points in time. Instead, you could describe this pattern perhaps as cyclical, where it starts off cold in January, gets warmer through the summer months of June to September, and then gets colder again from January to March or so, and then it gets warm again. 
So one way to describe this would be to write, it looks like two lumps. It's warmest in June to July of each year and coldest in January to March of each year. What month had the highest average temperature? To answer this question, we need to find the highest point in the graph. The two tallest points are pretty similar, but the highest point is achieved close to the right-hand side of the graph. In this case, I'm interested in knowing which month this was, so I'm going to read down, and I see that it happened in July of 2015. Because this time series spans two years, it's important to also mention the year so that I know that this was July of 2015 and not July of 2014. Let's look at another question. What was the approximate average temperature in October of each year? To answer this question, I need to go to October of each year and then read up to find its temperature. Let's start with October of 2014. I'm going to look up until I hit the line graph, and then I'll read over to find the temperature. Now, because this doesn't fall exactly on a line, there will be some estimation here. So I'm guessing it's around 53 degrees Fahrenheit. So for my answer, I'll say October of 2014 was about 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you were to say 52 or 54, that would also be okay. That's why they're asking us for an approximate average temperature because we're doing our best to read from the graph. Next, we need to identify the average temperature in October of 2015. So I look over to October of 2015, and once again, I'll read up until I hit the line graph, and then I'll read over, and this is just under 50. So again, we're gonna do our best to estimate. I'm gonna estimate with about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, if you were to say around 49 degrees, that would also be fine. Just make sure to label your answers, both with degrees Fahrenheit as well as the month and year. Okay, let's do one more. Which month had an average daily temperature of 36 degrees Fahrenheit? This time, instead of looking at a month and reading up, now we're going to have to look at a temperature of about 36 and then read over to the data point. 36 is going to be just above the halfway point between 30 and 40, or just above the line for 35. Next, I'll read over until I hit a specific data point. Then I'll look down, and I see that this was in November of 2014. So November of 2014 had an average daily temperature of about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks for watching this short video about time series and pie graphs. If you'd like to review stem and leaf plots, you can click on the arrow to the left, or you can watch the next video, which is about how graphs can be used to mislead you. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day!